Florence de Jong and Ina Baga, two members of a musical family, have enjoyed kaleidoscopic careers which have taken in the whole range of music for the movies. The early picture houses used a small orchestra with a piano to act as a relief when fatigue got the better of the musicians. As the cost of the orchestra became prohibitive, the piano took over completely, only to be ousted by an orthodox church organ in many cinemas. The inventive genius who turned the church organ into something of a one-man orchestra was a telephone engineer from Cheshire, Robert Hope Jones. But Hope Jones's adaptation didn't meet with instant acclaim. The British turned their noses up at it, so he took off to America and, with Rudolf Wurlitzer, formed what was to become a formidable musical partnership. Florence de Young. I, at the age of 13, I was still in school. And I could tell that, uh, well, I could make a noise playing to these films. So I took myself off and got myself an evening job. I think it paid about 15 bob for the week. And that was a chance I got to get onto the organ. I had a few lessons with it, but then, of course, it reverted back to the piano. Well, because many of the cinemas couldn't afford a piano, could they? Uh, an organ, an organ those nothing days. no good. They didn't know what it meant. No, it was only when the big cinemas were built then they bought the big organs in and of course from anything from I should say those day twenty thousand pounds upward my first introduction at the tender age of twelve was playing to children's matinees on a magnificent four manual Norman and Beard organ at the Strand Warrior Square South End which incidentally was McLean's favorite organ he used yeah. to come down specially to play it I used to uh, refrain from playing because when the cowboy film was on, the, the row was so terrific that even the four manual organ didn't make, make, make any impression. And the kids used to go in for tuppence, a bag of sweets and an orange. You know, it's a most strange thing. Now we're back where we started. I have done more work just in the last few years playing to silent film, the National Theatre, the Academy, and the most universities in England. Silent films, they've made a wonderful comeback, haven't they? Yes. Do you remember this one, Ina? Oh, yes. Thief of Baghdad. We played it for the thief. Mm. And the... Mm. Music of Kismet. Mm. Remember them? And of course, we didn't play Hearts and Flowers. All the lovers holding hands in the back seats. I used to like to play music, not extemporary the whole time. Well, so long as it's not too um, detracting from the quick numbers. You know. But just like the painter with his brush, the same picture always lends itself to personal interpretation. Now, what can you remember? Well, for the Black Pirate, I like to play as much Spanish stuff oh, yeah. as I can. For yeah. instance, the marvelous picture the title. when you come to the old sort of blood and thunder stuff and right. the villain comes in she can't pay the rent so of course the music to fit the situation but um, most of our work in the 30s and 40s of course were um, uh, organ interludes on the big organs and at Camden Town, Gaumont, where I was there for quite a season, I had to play Cine Variety. Had a marvellous organ there that used to swivel out, the curtain used to go up and the organ used to swivel out 
and you could sort of adjust the position of it and you were on the stage accompanying the artists but unfortunately there was a snag there because the curtain was uh, weighted with a lump of lead you see and sometimes when you press the open button instead of the organ sliding out the lead would come down and the organ and the lead would be doing this by this time i'd gone you see i was well away but uh, it was grand fun I think I've um, embraced all facets of playing. You name it, I've done it. Ballet, recitals, church music, accompanying, the lot. And even a bit of, you know, that you can't buy in the experience. Of course.